by DLA Driving School. Hello and welcome to Owen Town, and here's what's coming up today. Luton go to Sheffield Wednesday and dominate the game, get a 1 0 win. Everyone's happy. Pelly Ruddock, definitely a legend, right, Vitaro? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we take a look at Stonny Bradley. He reached 100 games for Luton Town. So we're going to take a look at him, how good he's been since he signed for us. Vitaro's favourite ever Luton player, I think. Yeah. And we also answer your Instagram questions. Loads more to come today. Dave's with me on my left, kind of, and uh, Batara's on my right. He's definitely Evening, guys. He is. But how are you both? Um, what a difference a week makes, eh? What a difference. I'm really happy. Really happy. Likewise. Yeah? Very, very happy. Because yeah. Millwall was terrible, wasn't it? Like, we don't want to really touch too much on Millwall, but it wasn't a good game. It was atrocious. Atrocious. Mm. I can't believe we played that badly. You know, but Saturday's kind of uh, helped us clean the wounds up a little bit. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think you would have definitely taken three points from... Millwall and Sheffield Wednesday, wouldn't you, though? Yeah. I'd, well, I'd, I think, you know, I would have preferred six, but three's enough. Yeah, but you would have taken three, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course. Just like you'd probably take three for my next two games. Four. Four, three, whatever. Um, anyway, before we dive more into the um, Sheffield Wednesday win, let's look at three-word reviews. This is what you guys said in three words. Dave says, accomplished away performance. Robert says, inspired formation change. Cam says, slowly looking established. Derek says, Van Aken spitting. Unsure what that means. <laughs> Is that the player that got yeah, sent off? Apparently spat yeah, apparently spat out. Yeah. It looks like when you look on the slow-mo that he spat at, but I don't think he spat at. I he probably just spat so. anyway. I, it's, it's, it's a difficult one to call. Because oh, I think if someone spat him, it would have been a much more, it would have been so much more uproar from oh, the when you, when you, when you look at the When you look at the footage, you can clearly see him spit, but you don't know whether he's spitting at Ruddock. Apelli, or yeah, but it wouldn't have been at him because otherwise, I'm um, said that in time, especially times like this now, it would have been it would have been uproar. Well, who knows? Leanne says midfield nailed it. Uh, Clive says bounce back ability. Will says Danny silence critics. Nick fully deserved win. Alex says teams like Luton. Hooray! Saw that comment it. quite a lot on the weekend, didn't we? From Sheffield Wednesday fans yeah. should be beating teams like Luton every week, though, don't we? Really didn't Let's do it. it. Underestimate us at your own peril, really. Exactly. I should say that teams like Luton. There's a, there's a lot of teams like Luton that, that don't get the credit when they deserve it. Mm-hmm. And we played bloody brilliantly on Saturday. Absolutely no question of that. Inspired Will says... Inspired formation um, change is what I'm going to say. Inspired formation change. Yeah. The fact that we adapted to another style of play. Love it. Absolutely fucking love it. And Will says about um, Danny Hilton's silence and the critics. What did you make of his performance just just quickly from, on, from the weekend? Uh, unbelievable yeah. man of the match for me. Yeah. Brilliant, wasn't he? Unbelievable. He was on it from minute one, obviously. I thought his touches, his like, you know, the ability to take a good first touch, and just in general, like intelligence. I mean, don't get it wrong, you, you know what you're gonna get from Danny Hill. You're gonna get masses of fucking pace, and you're gonna get, but you're gonna get some work rate. You're gonna get some, what's the word? Some, um, some nice touches. Some nice oh, touches. Yeah. yeah, some nice touches. That's not a word. That's a phrase. But yeah, we'll go with that. Well, he nearly opened the scoring after like 20 seconds, didn't he? And. Um, I was working at the weekend, so I wasn't watching this live. But producer Jacobs texted me saying, Hilton's missed a sitter in the first 20 seconds. And I replied saying, has he got a score? And Jacobs like, yeah, he's got a score. And I've seen mm. the highlights back. And I think, actually, I think Hilton's done everything right with that chance. Like, he's, he's had to take it quickly. He's, like, falling over as he hit it. It was a drawn-out chance as well. It was a long, drawn-out chance for yeah. him. He'd done three, it was probably two or three phases before that. A little bit of skill that he'd done. He'd done well to him get into that situation. But you know what? Some people probably say he's got a score. I say, yeah, he's probably got a score. But at the same time, you've got to credit the defender on the line, Dave. I, mean, I, I, would, say, I, would, say, I would say he done well to create the chance. Yes, exactly. anything else. I mean, he got the ball, he, he chased it in, he beat, the, he beat the goalkeeper quite easily. Anywhere else in that goal, it goes in. Anywhere mm-hmm. else he puts it, the defender has got back and he's defended it really well. And if you listen to the Sheffield Wednesday commentary of the game, you would totally see that that's exactly what they felt. They yeah. thought the the, the the defender got on the line well. They did escape it. They did escape a, a golden opportunity to score. But you, I don't think you can blame him for missing. He was just disappointed he didn't go in straight away, really. It was a slippery fair. pitch as well. He, I mean, the ball was getting away from him a little bit as he took the, the final touch to take the shot. And he was at a bit of a back angle as well. So, do you know what? Probably does have to score. But at the same time, you can understand why he hasn't scored. I think if, if Hilton takes any longer with that chance... And then he gets tackled. People will be like, well, "Why didn't he just yeah, exactly. shoot first time?" Yeah, exactly. So it was one of them. I think it was one of them things he did for me. When I look at that back, and I, I text producer Jacob saying, "Like, no, I don't think that was 
he does have to score because I thought we did everything right. He was unlucky for it not mm. to go in. And I think we were we were disappointed it didn't go in because it was such a brilliant yeah. you know, what a what a great start that would have been. But you can't, you know, give credit to defender getting back and heading it off the line. You have to do that because it's it, now, Dave. It, it, that was well, yeah. I suppose at the yeah, weekend what, what I was you a say bit. Today, like, was it? No, but sorry, he's got to score that. And well, no, you changed your mind about five seconds. That no, I understand, but no, the no, defender I, did very, very well though. At the end, he did. Yeah, he, he did. Goes, and he and if, it, if it was us defending that, yeah. you'd be going, what, what, what mm, an absolute brilliant defence. Yeah. So you know, give him his dues. Hilton did well. And that probably explains why Aiden Flint was in the team in the week as well, just for that block. It was nice to see Hilton try and like get in that position though, wasn't it? Because he, we spoke about Hilton. Was it last week, the week before? And you've basically said he needs to run in the team. Mm-hmm. And if he can keep getting chances like that, he will score. And it's like Nathan Jones said, Hilton will score. So he's got no he doubt about it. Right, Hilton, he's a good player. We all know this. I mean, like I said last week, week before, whenever it was, I said it's a bit harsh that people are sitting there slating Danny Hilton after a like, couple of camera appearances. I, I can't understand that, but. Look, he looked sharp on Saturday. He I think they, game, to, be fair, sharper, but sorry, to be fair, yeah. they, they all look sharp on Saturday, yeah. all of them. But um, Hil- a bit Hilton, around him as well, so. Hilton led the line brilliantly. He, he he played his nuts off basically, and you know anybody who's doubting his ability in this division are stupid. Yeah, because that was a class performance. He only missed a goal. If he'd have got the goal, he'd have it'd have been an incredible performance of for him. But everything he did, I didn't. I didn't think he did anything wrong Saturday. I agree. Did we look comfortable in that first half? Yes. Yeah, mostly. I think I, I, I genuinely, I'm, I'm looking at the game and I've, I've watched highlights from us, our side and from the Sheffield Wednesday side. And I genuinely don't think we were troubled that much in the first half. I can't really remember uh-huh. panicking. We was in control. We played. I tell you what, we did do. We played it really quick. We played the ball around quite fast, didn't we? And, Is that down to our new signings plan? Who knows? I, I potentially, potentially, yeah. Well, well, I say potentially, but it, even if we'd have had our own team, if we're playing at that pace, we're hard to beat anyway. You say playing at that pace, though, but surely that comes down just to the players you have and formation. I think the formation as well as the suit. The way what that, formation you know, was it? Just out of curiosity, because I didn't see the game. To be honest, it, I'm not too sure myself. It, like it was a packed midfield for me, with maybe a number ten as maybe someone like maybe Lee or Pelly just moving slightly, like you know, one Up or two. Down, yeah, but. This doesn't matter what the fight. We were just passing the ball crisply. Mm-hmm. We're playing it quickly. We're getting in positions quickly, and you know, pressing, pressing all yeah, the time. Good job. We didn't give them time on the ball when exactly. they got it, and it was great. And it was great to see us chase it down like that. It was great. Even we had the ball as well at the back, or like deep positions in midfield slash defence. <laughs> Mate, I'm just gonna say as well. Tom Lockyer as well. Like the back three has a like a back three in it. This back three, it. yeah, back three. We're packed out midfield kind of yeah. thing, like pushing sort of like slightly more advanced, which well, applied had, the pressure you had, on you them. Had, you had Pelly playing quite high up the pitch yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, quite high up the pitch. Good. Mm. Arguably the best chance of the half fell to Pelly Ruddock. Oh. I'd say this was a better chance yeah. than Hilton's, weren't it? What I love about this though is Pelly made this himself because I love Pelly. You know, I love. Right, he didn't make the pass himself, did he? But he start, He was on. He, he started, started, didn't he? Started he started the move. Yeah, he he start definitely the move, started the yeah. move. Yeah. Nice little one to Elliot Lee. It looks really nice when they when you watch it back. Such he a was brilliant. allowed a lot of space, but it, it looked nice. Good movement. Good ball from Lee. And Pelly's done all the hard work there. He just it just sort of just puts it wide for some reason. He's not a striker, is he? He's got to put it down to that. But you know what? Should be hitting the fucking target. I'm sorry. Double Should vision, I think. Yeah, yeah. he probably it, the the goal was it was quite wide of the goal. Well, it was quite well. wide of the goal. The, the build up was right though you know the passing was great and the little through ball to him to run onto so he's Plus. his his ability to to know where to go to yeah, receive course. that ball is brilliant and anywhere across that goal he scores anywhere. do you think that's a situation with Pelly where he has tried too hard to score instead of maybe just getting into that position and going you know what I'm just going to smash it at the goal that he's gone I'm going to try and side for in the bottom corner and yeah. then it's gone wide do you reckon he's just tried to be a little too precise you know, it's quite, I guess that's I kind just, of what we say about Cornick, isn't it, it, sometimes? Yeah, no, look, actually, you're going back to it. Cornick sounds like a very similar sort of situation. You look at Cornick half the time, but for me, with um, Pelly on Saturday, I just don't think he's used to being in positions. He's not used to scoring the goals. He found, the he found himself he's in front of the goalkeeper yeah. on his own, and he actually just put it in, yeah, and, and he it. put he, it wide. He wasn't 30 yards out with an absolute screamer, so he didn't have to do it, did he? Let's face it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true, true, though, isn't it? Come that on. That is true. He doesn't but score goals But he did create the opportunity well, um, um, I, at the time on Saturday, you and I, Pataro, was mm. was screaming a little bit. Yeah, screaming a little bit. Put it this way, I need to put that chair over there. So, 
It, it got quite bad at one point. Were you stressing? Oh, I think we, we were. I think I think I think the reason we were stressing is because it, it was it was going back to the like we did the other week. We were totally in control of a game. We hadn't scored, and then we knew what you know. Think of Stoke. We could have we could have been couple up at the first half. They yeah. come out second half, and you just think, is this going to happen again? Exactly, That's yeah. what you keep thinking. Is this going to happen yeah, again? We were so that. dominant in that first half. We deserved two or maybe even three goals. It was great yeah. to see, though. Just a shame we weren't there. Exactly. That's what we kept reiterating yeah. every sort of like five, six minutes. Why aren't we there? Why aren't we there? But obvious reasons we know we're not there, but it'd be nice to, wouldn't it? And with Pelly's chance... That, that happened like that. That's that's the thing what you, Batara, have been calling out for ages is having Pelly in them attacking positions and you don't mind him being further up the pitch. And do you think with these signings of Dewsbury Hall, Morel, that actually we're going to see Pelly now quite, quite yeah, far I up the pitch? Pelly might be given a, like a free sort of like Roman role as in to drive the ball on in attacking areas rather than sitting in front of the back four trying to dictate play. That's and you prefer it. that, yeah? Oh, mate, 100%. I would not want Pelly sitting in front of the back four the fucking bl- no, I wouldn't. I just want to see it. I wouldn't want to see it. I just want to see him driving the ball on from sort of like you know wide midfield, like, like a diamond. If you're playing a diamond fi- formation, sorry, diamond five. What the fuck am I talking about? Diamond formation, and he's like left or right rolling around like, across the line. I don't mind seeing him drive down the wings or trying to get in the box, doing a little step over, doing this, doing that. Probably want to see him like up top like that. I mean, I want to see Collins or Hilton or yeah. Well, probably not. Anything, he just yeah. played. He played. You know what I'm he played f- much. F- <laughs> further up the pitch on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And it paid off in the end, didn't it? Let's yeah. be fair. Because he got a bit of stick, Pelly, after the Millwall game, didn't he? Because he lost the ball for Millwall's second, which just killed any hope, yep. which anyone believe we had let's, let's, at let's the time. But Sorry. No, no, go on. All I'm going to say about Pelly, Pelly's touch on Saturday shocking. was shocking at times. He, he, he just needed to, to get that in his game, and it would have been an awesome game. Yeah. But he'd get the ball and he'd lose it quite easily or touch it too hard or miss, you know, and that's the frustrating thing with him. On yeah. Saturday, and I keep coming to you, Dave. Or I keep saying to you, what performance we're we going to get from Pelly? Like every sort of like between five and ten minutes, Jekyll or Hyde. Yeah, and and I, I genuinely think that's how what Pelly is. One minute he looks like a top class, you know, top end Championship Premier League player. Next minute he looks like a fucking League Two player. And I'll, I'll say, it, I will say it because it's I, just, it's, it's just that sometimes when the ball goes, sometimes when the ball goes to him. His touch is heavy. Yeah, he loses the ball quite easily. Sluggish. But then, then, you, then he does sublime things, and yeah. you just think, why isn't he like that all the time? So the little one two he did with Lee, fantastic. But in the same breath, gets the ball at his feet and he gives it away easily, and that 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 frustrates. I think Nathan Jones agrees with well, clearly what you said though, because he said in his his post match interview that you know Pelly just needs to if he can just finish that touch, work on that touch and a few bits, that he could be a top top player. True, and how many times on Why Saturday not? did Bataro shout at the screen about not having the right touch? Yeah, you know. In the end, we can't really complain too much because because yeah. of what what well, happened. Of course, yeah, this is it. But some of it, some of it is so basic as well, like and what he can do. And if he can just turn like you know the basics on a little bit and do what he can do with like special moments, which we we've seen him do many of occasions. And by the way, he haven't lost the game as well when he scored, which is great to see as well. But do you know what he really? Yeah, done, I think my, head, done <laughs> my head on Saturday. I'll be yeah. honest, I was sitting there screaming, get him off, get him off. He fucking needs to come off. And the next minute he scored, I've gone, ah, just leave him on now. He might as well watch another one. <laughs> well, that's but, yeah, true. That's how it is, though. That's how it is with Pelly. Everyone knows this. I mean, I know, see, people don't want to like, slate Pelly and whatever else, but sometimes he needs a kick up the arse off. Uh, you can't, like, Batari, you can't slate a legend. But, you know, <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, uh, the opposition know how good he is at times. You know, and, and they, I mean, how many times does he get fouled and things like that? You know, yeah, it's, of course. It is, it is, they know how good he is. Not so, I said Jekyll and Hyde, though. Yeah, but, you know, for the sake of the heavy touch, you know, on Saturday, the team played brilliantly and he was part of that team that played brilliantly. We can't really argue there. For someone who's not seen the game, i.e. me, and you look at the key moments from the game, they all involve Pelly. <laughs> like, literally, the, the best chance of the game falls to Pelly. We'll talk about the red card now. That was on Pelly. The goal was from Pelly. But the red card, uh, their manager said it's soft. Idiot. No, it's not soft. Gary Monk said the the red card was soft. But the thing is, mate, the geezer also looked like he had no sleep within the last six or seven days or whatever. He looked like absolute shit. So (laughs) I don't know if you know what he's talking about. Sure it wasn't you? (laughs) Yeah, it probably was, mate. (laughs) No, to be be honest. That's so rude. (laughs) Look Look at it from both sides, right? 
I've, I've watched again. I've watched highlights from Luton, and I've watched the highlights yeah. from the Sheffield Wednesday point of view. And the Sheffield Wednesday commentators think it wasn't a send off. They totally think it was a yellow card. What? But his his leg was so high when he hit Pelly's thigh. It was disgusting. Yeah, it was a terrible foul. It was and a that, red, weren't it? Yeah, but they also that they're also saying that it was a Luton players that asked for the red card. No, not a chance. No way. That referee Pelly went was to sat on the floor just doing this. I yeah. mean, he wasn't rolling around, was he? Like no. fucking Neymar for ten years. He was. Just, he was yeah. sitting there going. The referee no, went straight to his. It, yeah. yeah, the referee went straight to his back pocket. It was a definite, definite red fa- red card. Even if the Luton players were asking for it, I don't think players Every ever right influence referees sorry, nowadays anyway, though, I'm do sorry, they? I'm sorry, but it studs right. Even if he pulled out slightly at the last minute, which I'm pretty sure he did not anyway, but even if he did, it starts to still up, mate. You're going, you're It's gone. serious foul play, isn't it? It was, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100% that. That could have gone horribly... Mate, that was a bit lower. I'm telling you now, his knee would have come, up, would have come off. Yeah, exactly. Disgusting. All that takes is his leg to be planted yeah. as well, and it's... Snapped exactly that. So, exactly. Gary Monk and Sheffield Wednesday commentary team, you are wrong. You need your eyes tested, deluded, uh, and have deluded. Some sleep, Gary Monk as well, because you look shit, mate. And get some sleep because Mataro doesn't like the way you look. Um, Pelly then uh, three minutes later puts us into the lead. What a goal! What a goal from Pelly. Was it, was it only three minutes later? I only scored the bangers, Pell, wow. didn't he? Was it actually that? Mm. Well, see, we were just yeah too happy, jumping around the house like fucking. <laughs> Wombles on fucking crack. <laughs> <laughs> but we saw the best of Pelly with this goal, didn't we? Yeah. Because That's it, Pelly for you. It comes, it's like you said, Batara. He comes out to him. He does some like, sublime touch. Past Barry Baden, by the way, who's very experienced midfielder. Good player. And then to have that composure on his weaker foot to fire it low into that bottom corner. That's a top goal. That That's is a top goal. goal. Oh, he struck it really well. As well. It's what? On his weaker foot. On it, that's what I just said, yeah. yeah. Weaker left foot. He struck yeah, exactly. it, struck it really well. Do, and don't take away the build-up to that goal either. You know, the pass down the wing, mm-hmm. the cross. It was good. Oh, it was, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it, was cla- it was a class move and a really nice goal. Really nice. And, and uh, you know, no more than we deserved. No more than we deserved. Yeah. And do you know what the thing is, right? When Pelly scores, I celebrate more than anyone else, like when Pelly scores as well. Do you know what? I wish I had a camera on Saturday. <laughs> it would have been fantastic. It would have been fantastic. Uh, mate, I'm not going to lie. Even your daughter looks at me like a bit funny. I was, she's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> just, just don't worry about it. We just scored. She's like, I gathered that. <laughs> I love getting a, what I got a WhatsApp uh, update from Steve just saying 1 0 Pelly. And I was like, yeah, come on. Yeah. Hey, mate, I'm real. I'm real. Great goal. Yeah, it was. It was a great goal. Great touch. Great finish. But you know what? It was inside the area. So I'm a bit disappointed from Pelly. Why was it 30 yards out? It's still a corner? banger, though, isn't it? It <laughs> yeah, is still a banger, just, to be fair. He, that, no, one, no, one was, no one was stopping that shot. No mm. one. It was great. I, it was just, I do keep saying it, it's no more than we deserve. We yeah. played so well on Saturday and such a. A, a contrast to the previous match it was unbelievable and then that, that final 10-15 minutes we had to hold on for how did we look because I have seen Sheffield Wednesday fans say they should have had a penalty was that in them last 15 uh, was it I, I think do you know what I think on the I think on when we watched it we thought oh good god no clumsy <laughs> No, not even that. When I when I watched it back, I don't think there was any contact there t- that pushed him over. Or anything I was kind like of in the nose. As soon as I heard like the re- oh, I saw the referee. Sorry, not heard him. Obviously, wasn't there. But as soon as I see the referee, did you hear him? Go, did you? Like, no, yeah. Apparently, he was like, "Yeah, mate, get up." I, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> probably wasn't even scared. But anyway, as soon as I see the referee, like sort of like waving, going, nah, "Get on with it," kind of thing, and then like complaining, and I thought, "Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We're fine. We're fine." Because straight away, you, you, had, you, the mo- you, you had You had those moments where it would have been um, a travesty if they got that mm-hmm. penalty. I don't think it was the pen, and and that they also moaned about their their goal that was disallowed as well. Oh no, that's hundred percent. I mean, that's hundred percent. Two thousand there. It's two thousand yeah, there for me. Hundred percent disallowed. Two thousand. So, um, did we have a bit of pressure? Yes. Did we get a bit? You know, spooks. Mm. Yeah. Towards the end, when they were having a couple of corners, we kept thinking, yeah. please, please, don't concede. But do you know what, Sluger, he was punching well. He was keeping well. Impressive, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So the whole team deserved that. Well, we had to keep checking Bet three six five or Sky. Sports app, or whatever, just to make sure because obviously, you no know, iFi is a bit shitty and it's like a minute and a half. Yeah, it, it gets when you get to the extra time bit 90 plus three. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We're Straight checking on. the we result. We, we have to check the result. Well, some stats when Pelly scores for Luton 18 games, 17 wins, one draw, no defeats, Batara, like you said. Yep. Uh, the only match he scored in that we didn't win was in August 2014 against Berry at home. And if I recall it, it was a Tuesday night, and I think it was our first point when we got promoted to the Football League. So. Wow. Yeah. Did you recall hang that? Hang on. Who? Legend. Against who? Barry. You say first game when we got promoted. No, no. First 
It couldn't have been because we beat Carlisle, no, didn't we? Yeah. First home point, first home game. Oh, do you know? Oh, you've got to look it up now. Much. Someone's going to tell you. Producer Jacob will look it up and confirm or deny. Hey, listen, um, he is a legend, though. Who, Jacob or uh, Pelly? Well, both. <laughs> oh, right. I say, Jacob. <laughs> look, yeah, you, you don't get many players that stick with the team as long as he has, have gone through so many divisions as long as he has, and scores goals like he does. Oh, and someday uh, you're going to admit it. For it. It'll, go along, it'll go alongside your Nathan Jones tattoo, mate. He could potentially oh, hit 300 appearances this season. Amazing. 300 appearances this season. How many games is he playing? Yeah, Fuck 300 it, mate. evidently, Jesus. mate. Yeah, that's exactly what I meant. That's crazy, uh, that. Let's take a look at today's player focus then. Sonny Bradley. He oh, made 100 appearances. Um, he, he made his 100th appearance on Saturday. Um, so we, we thought we'd Classic. celebrate that. Have a little chat about him because you love him. Love Tara, him. you love Classy. him. Classy. Would you Classy. say he's the best centre-back we've had at the club in recent years? And I say recent years because me and, me and producer Jacob were chatting about this earlier. Steve McNulty's up there as well. You think? Saying, yeah, I love Steve McNulty. Because we're thinking like last 15 years, what, 2005, that's when we had like probably the best centre-halves. Are Bradley, or is Bradley better than the likes of Chris Coyne back in the day and Curtis Davis back in the day and Marcus Heikkinen back in the day? It's not that I mentioned Chris Coyne in this because he might be listening. So just... Uh, you can just only judge. It. Yeah, I think you can't compare... You can't compare that type of player from different generations because it's now. So I could, you could go back further and say, you know, was was a previous one in the sixties, seventies, eighties different to you know like Fozzie playing for Luton. He was great. He, you know, he was solid. But then in your generation, you get you get your player that is solid as well. Yeah. And he, this no, Sonny's one of those. Is he better than the others in the last fifteen years? Who technically, knows? for me, he's the best defender we've had for a long time. Technically, just got to put it out there. Unreal player. Well, you rave about him all the time. Oh, I love him, Dave. Yeah. You know, I love Sonny. You rave about him. What is it you love about him, mate? The, the fact that he's a centre half and he's not gifted with lots of pace. He's not gifted with like you know skill or anything like that. But the biggest skill he does have is his mind and the ability to pass. His brain and his passing. Yeah, he's ability, passing. Mate, he's passing. He's he calm. The ball you comes into him, he takes it on his chest, he takes it past the player, do you know what I'm saying? So he's calm. Come on, man. He's calm. He's unreal. He is class. Yeah. I think I made a couple of quotes last uh, last season on the podcast, and obviously I think a couple of people got my back about it, and I said, well, why can't he be a sort of like a £5 million pound player or whatever? Why can't he? I think for me, he's proven. I mean, his his passing ability and some of the things he does on the pitch are unreal. He starts most fire attacks from defence, and you... You're laughing at me. No, no. I'm only like, smiling like, because the other day against Mill, you were like, oh, sorry, I love him a lot. And he just poofed it out for a goal kick. <laughs> <laughs> we looked at each other like, yeah, Sonny for you. Yeah. But no, I, I agree with what you're saying. Like, He must have the best like pass success rate in the whole team. I'm just saying, he must have. Because he is unreal, mate. He can play a narrow ball. He can play into feet. He can play into the striker's feet. He does it all. When you make a statement like that, best thing to go, go. Producer Jacob, can you check oh, that for us and put it out on social media, please? If it's if it's true, sorted. I'm going for over seventy percent. I think I think you want a central defender to turn up and and be confident. So when you turn up and you see him in the team, you're confident that he's going to you know perform as well as he and can. Do you not think he does calm people down as well though with his ability on the ball? I on do, the ball, he's fantastic. I, when you when you look at this central defender, for me, you want someone who's strong, someone who can head the ball, who can and can distribute the ball when they need to. Yeah. And, and he does all that. It's that calmness, maybe you could say, that Sonny has that someone like Matty Pearson doesn't, would you say? Which is yeah. why maybe Pearson does find himself Chalk going long all the time. As well, so. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Is there a way Sonny can get better? Can he keep improving? Everyone can keep improving I, if they... If the they only, the only way not. you improve Sonny Bradley is you put him in a, like a stronger sort of like a, like a unit. Like he's looking stronger now already. Like I mean, the players that we've got in now, we look stronger already from last season. So if you put and stronger players, yeah, yeah, you put stronger players around but him. Th- but what I'm saying is as well, another thing, even last season sometimes when we were looking absolute dog shite, he was still standing out for me in some of the things he was doing. Passing to the striker's feet, you know, like taking the ball and keeping hold of the ball and not hoofing it. Like, I mean, obviously Pearson does that sometimes. But I'll t- tell you what, mate, I, can't, I just can't say a bad word about Sonny because, the, the, mate, the man is a fucking god. He's unreal. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put it out there. Sonny Bradley for me is one of the best defenders we've had for a long time. Well, let's read some comments that you sent to us on social media at Owen the Town about Sonny Bradley. 
Sean says, despite his appearance, he's a very calm and collected centre-back, rarely makes a mistake and is rarely done for pace as he reads the game so well. Not sure how he could get better for us, maybe add a few more goals to his game. Which, when we signed him, he was scoring for fun at Plymouth. And what, three for us at the moment? Mm -hmm. It's not too bad. Chris says, Sonny's done a really good job for us. He's had it harder than a lot given we've moved through the league, so he's had to keep improving and learning quickly. Last season, I thought the arrival of Carter Vickers helped our defence hugely, and they all improved during that time. I think playing with another guy like that would help him improve again. Yeah. Which I guess what you said yeah. as well, if he, if he has a stronger unit around him, maybe that is where he improves and, and we see yeah, even... He can push bit. forward then and like, you know... The like your Carter Vickers is like the main sort of pacey one that can get back and you know turn the turn a striker. Yeah. Sorry, and, and also play it calm. Yeah, he's and, and he's got a good point. Moving through the leagues, mm-hmm. he, he's got better as we've gone oh, forward. Massively. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ben says, "I love how recently he's been moving forward a lot more and making key passes to send attackers on the way. His game is set to improve a lot more over the season. You watch." Yep, I agree with that, Ben. Love that. James Fantastic. says he has been a proper servant and done so much for us. Having Carter Vickers as a partner last season was a huge help to him, but he needs a better partner to push one step further. I think he needs to be careful on the balls and improvement. And Will says, think he's quality. Him and Lockyer could be the partnership to push us to upper championship. However, when he plays alongside Pearson, I'm just full of nerves. And it, I, yeah. yeah, is he full of nerves? That's literally because, echoes it, though, but, what we said. Yeah, but is he full of nerves because it's not, it's not Brent Sonny he's worried about, is it? it it's Pearson. Mm-hmm. And then exactly. Pearson has a good game every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit rude, Dave, every now and then. <laughs> yeah, he does. I, 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 do you know what? Whoever's the back four, you support them, right? You've got to get behind them. So maybe Sonny we could Bradley's see class, Bradley and Lockyer as a as a partnership going forward. Has to be. I'll tell you what, I'd, I'd even take a back three of Pearson as well because, you know, when Pearson's in a back three, I trust him more as well, weirdly enough. I can see that. So, yeah. But let's just let's give Sonny Bradley a bit more praise because you know he's unreal, mate. He's unreal. I'm just saying he oh. is class, mate. People You're going to run people, out. Do you know? People, no, Dave. People did not give him enough credit last season, and whenever I was, oh yeah, you know this and that. Obviously, people you, you bang on about him all the time, Pataro. Right? Dave, you, he is you, class. You bang on about him all the time, and he is class. But class. yeah, he is class, and I like it. I like the fact that when he plays well, we love him. Yeah, but he always plays well. What does he have about a bad game? He doesn't really ever ever have a bad game. He's always consistent. He's always almost like a seven point five out of ten every week for me. Anyway, well, let's hope he starts against Forest on Wednesday and uh, makes another. Who's Sunny? Yeah, obviously. Let's hope he starts. Hundred percent. Hundred percent going to start. Probably our best player. Well, let's look start. at our next two fixtures anyway. So we got two home games: Nottingham Forest, Brentford. Uh, let's talk about Forest quickly. Uh, the, the way they've started the season. That's another big opportunity for three points, isn't I th- it? I think that's a potential banana skin for us mm-hmm. because Forest have been dreadful, and um, you know they bounce win soon. Yeah, like. yeah, I hope it's not us, but uh, there's a potential banana skin. But if we approach it the same way we approached Sheffield Wednesday, we will win. Yeah. If we play like we played against Millwall, we haven't got a freaking chance. That's how I was thinking about it. I think we're good for a draw, to be honest. I, t- I, th- I think we draw. can beat them, totally. I think uh, we can beat I would, them. Yeah, but would you not take a draw, though? I know it's a home game, home yeah. it doesn't really matter, but I'd 100% take a draw against them. I would. I saw a comment on social lose. media uh, today or yesterday, and it said, what do you think about the fact that we've beaten the bottom four at the moment? Uh, Our okay. four wins have come against okay. the bottom four. Technically, technically, had Sheffield Wednesday not had the points deducted, they'd have been just behind us in the league. They wouldn't mm. have been bottom. So I don't agree with that. To run out how it goes, and if you do beat the bottom four or whatever, well, it's bottom I can four. Love if, it. if you're going to you beat, beat the bottom teams, then you know you, you do you beat, it's, right. it's a six yeah. pointer every time yeah, you play a bottom team, then isn't it? So yeah, yeah uh, you know, don't read too much into that. We've won four of our first seven. I take that yeah, easily. Hundred we'll percent. Don't take care that. who you beat, and if, if the bottom four are going to be the bottom four all bleeding season, then that's brilliant, mm-hmm. isn't it? I mean, we're what twelve points now. Twelve points from seven games. It's brilliant. You know, is it's, it twelve it's, points? Can't complain. Yeah. It's twelve or seven, isn't it? It's a great start. It's a great start. Can yeah, we be? Can we be? No, Nottingham Forest have, have played dreadfully at the beginning of this season. That, that you know, so they're there for the taking. So you, you take a point, and which mm. is probably your low line on every game we play at the moment when we play a team that has a name. Yeah, decent. Because because yeah. you, you 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 think of their reputation more than anything else. You think not Forest. I still don't think they're as bad as what the position t- league table says they are. I've watched them a little bit this season. They're not that bad. I'm There's no weird, reason. I watch a lot of football, Do you know yeah. what? With I, again, I think crowds have a lot to f- lot to say about this because the crowds are not there. It's sort of an even playing field, yeah. a more even playing field. But there's no reason why we can't beat them. But look, we're in the championship. They're in the championship. Every single team around us in the championship. Obvious statement. But look, we're there to compete along with every single team in the league. And how many times do you see a season 
from one year to the next exactly the same in the table. You don't. I mean, no, one, it's always one minute you've got like fucking uh, Forest fight for, uh, to survival like, a few years back or whatever. So it's Brighton. Next minute they go up. So it's yeah, early doors. It's, yeah, it's early. It's early games. It's early doors right now. What I'd say about our next two home fixtures is uh, Forest. You you look at their their recent form, and them having to go to Luton away. Likewise with Brentford, that's not a trick. That's like that's that's a tricky game to go to, especially what mm. they probably look at us and go, "Wow, they're on pretty good form, Luton exactly. here," and they're going, "Well, we're not having the best of form. This could be a tricky game, and that's probably what we want, isn't it?" As long as they don't sit there and go, "Our oh, teams like Luton, we should be beating." Fuck you, no, you shouldn't be. Like, I think, uh, mate, you know, we're going to see that a lot on Wednesday. The supporters yeah, are going to say them. teams like Luton. A load of supporters are going to say that. Stay battering. Man. We if we play to our strengths, if we if we get moving quickly. We will beat Forest. We're a solid, good, we're we a good, Forest. good, solid team. We are very, very solid in this league. I'm saying now, it's exciting, isn't it? It is so exciting. More to the point, I'm looking forward Love to beating it. Brentford. Yeah, same. For, for obvious reasons, Pataro. Yeah. yeah. So on Saturday, the big game against Brentford. A big game. Ooh, yeah, big one, it's it? only a big game because I get to go to it. So oh, it's oh, exciting. Exciting. Oh, look at, you. Look at me, yeah, I get yeah, to go yeah. to Kenilworth yeah. Road, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> and, and just let's let's point out he has to wear his work clothes to go. Yeah, toss and, up. and his work clothes are not Luton clothes, so. You know, what technically, I don't have to wear shoot. wear them. Do you not? No. Are you going to wear them though? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, so, so you're going to go. <laughs> you can't keep using that word on the podcast. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't keep doing it. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just there. You go. I upset Batari. He makes me work for an extra half an hour after the podcast is finished. Thanks, half mate. No. Nah, nah, well, look, it's not. I understand your. Em- I understand though, Luke. I understand that your employers are your employers, right? I understand that. And how would you feel if Luton scored? Would you celebrate? I'm very professional when it comes to work. But either way. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> would you inside go, yeah? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. But well, obviously I'm going to have to be professional. We'll be, we'll be watching on iFollow. If we can see you in the crowd and you don't celebrate Luton goal, not going to be happy. Okay, well, can we actually talk about the actual game for Saturday as well? Um, you look at Brentford at the moment. They just lost to Stoke. They lost to Preston a couple of weeks ago. Then also not in the best form. So them coming to us, like I said, with Forest, could be a tricky, tricky game as well. They're going to come with a bit of confidence, aren't they? Some confidence. I mean, I mean, um, your man that they bought up front, uh, what's his name, Tony? Yeah, I'm yeah. Tony. He's scoring, though, isn't he? He's he's not. He's he, a handful. Yeah. So is he? <laughs> so you know, <laughs> why is that funny? <laughs> It's your perverted mind. (laughs) Listen, if again, I would say the same. If we start again like we started against Sheffield Wednesday, then we've got every chance of beating both of these teams. If we took four points, beat them last season as well. Yeah, but if we took well, when when Brentford were flying high, we beat them totally. Uh, Stronger side for me, yeah, I believe. So yeah, so I don't think they're as strong as they were last season. You you might disagree, but I don't think they are at this stage. They may become better, but at this moment, I wouldn't say they are. But. if we take four from six, I'll have that. Do you take three long. from six, four uh, from six? No, I'll take four from six, thank you. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm going to say it again. I, I don't care. I'll take three points. I'll take two points. I, either way, I, don't, I, just, I just don't want to lose. I'll take anything other than losses. I would right now. I know it sounds... But I, don't, I want to get a couple of draws on the board as well. So you would take two points instead of one loss and one win? Well, no, that doesn't make sense because you'd like to get an extra point. So <laughs> yeah, that doesn't I'm make sense. you up. Four from six. I Four think six. I think one's totally beatable oh, and we'll get a draw. Even if we go and draw both games, I will not be upset about it. I really won't. I'll be happy no, with it because sure. the fact is, the start we've had is incredible. I'm just saying it is incredible. I'll uh, be upset. I'll be upset if we don't win. Really? Yeah, because <laughs> I always am. Yeah, but they, I mean, don't get wrong. We go we go somewhere, right? We go to Forest on uh, Wednesday and we go to Brent or... Sorry. Uh, we not go to Forest until we're going home both times. But you know what I'm saying? And we take um, two draws. You would take that, wouldn't you? Um, I think... You, no, no, depend, I, well, okay, let depending me just on the way you played. But, uh, no, I, depending I, what, on the way you played, surely. If I we're think, not great, then you'd take it. Right, if we weren't playing well, I would say, yeah, I would take it. But you know what? If you're at that stadium, two nights run, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday nights, if you were actually there and you didn't, you didn't get a win, then I would be disappointed. So what about if it's like a fairly even game? Like, it's not much going on. 
and you oh, know, look, it's he, he, I just think we've established he's just not happy with with two points. No, I'm not. No, it's <laughs> not that. Bottom here, get to the root no, is evil, the, the root of it. Listen, <laughs> if, if it's two points all we get, then you have to be happy with two points. Yeah. But I think we've got more than two points in us for that games. I think we can get a potential two win. Points, two points, both. <laughs> I, I I just think we can get a win, and I'm happy with that. Well, let's move on to some Instagram questions and we'll see if we uh, do manage to get a win or two drawings or whatever it is from the next two games. It's going to be good. Um, so let's start with Anthony says, can Ray fit into our midfield after such a strong showing from KDH and Morel? Yep. Oh, simple. Can he though? Why, why not? Glenn Ray's Glenn Ray. Another player, another battle mate in midfield. Who do you leave out? Well, I don't know. It depends if you can play like a... If you're going to play a back three like we did on uh, Saturday, then why can't you fit in the midfield in like a home position? Or even, I think fin- even fin- as a back three, maybe. You know? Well, okay. Cool. Well, that's sorted. Bill says, is the five at the back something we could bring into home games? It's not always negative. Do you know what it is with five at the back formations? I don't know why anyone thinks of five at the back as negative because, because if anything, it's more attacking because yeah, you're wing back. Yeah, the two wing backs down. push up and down. It yeah, becomes so. a three to a five, a five to a three. That's what it does, yeah. I, yeah. I kept saying back three. I mean, what I meant by was, you know, the two I think wing you got, backs, full backs do that job. I think tactically, you've got to, you've got to take the manager and, and his staff and, and think they know... They, they they researched the games we're going to play, so they clearly did a good job on Saturday. Let's hope they do the same job on on this on on Wednesday night. Tom says, "Do you think we can sign some of these loan players permanently?" Depends where we are at the end of the season, wouldn't you say? Jewsby Hall, by looks at no chance. Oh no, Jewsby Hall, no, it's not a chance. Who else we got on loan? It's just Jewsby Hall, isn't it? Uh, non Bay. Yeah, but he's signing intention permanently. To, yeah, intention to buy. So, and 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 Nathan Jones is going to put him on Saturday. At some point, had we got two goals, he would have definitely been on the pitch. So, um, yeah, Jews Hall, not a chance. But yeah, uh, Sunday four or five year deal, isn't it? Leicester, so yeah, they, they like him. They just we can get some. Leicester experience. fans do like him a lot, and yeah. think he'll be yeah. a, a first teamer very shortly. Uh, Alex says, "Do you think a return to the diamond with Hilton and Collins up front would work?" Um, why not? Why it, not? Why know. not? Yeah, exactly. You, you never know, do you? Why not try anything? So, but, I, th- yeah. I think you can't. You can't have a lone striker. I don't think that. I think you know two up front would be great at times. And we still got Cornick's come back as well. Yep, that's Let's true. Don't forget my boy Cornick. Come on. God. So would it work? Why not? It worked in the past. Why wouldn't it work now? Exactly. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe they're saying they can try and like an FA Cup game potentially. But then I think if we get into the FA Cup games. Probably hey, wants to rest them all, doesn't he? He'll probably just play non non be up front. I'm yeah. hoping we win the FA Cup this season. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> nice and realistic as always. Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, let's pick one more. What's the best formation? Yeah, what is the best formation? No one knows. Oh, there you go. No one knows. <laughs> we just didn't answer the question. <laughs> what is the best? We don't we know. The answer is a rhetorical one. We don't know what's the best uh, formation because at the end of the day, we played what? A f- was it a three five two or a five fucking three two or whatever? I don't know. On the Saturday. best, the best formation is the one that 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 no, that is planned for the team you're playing. Okay, right. So enough, you yeah. can't you can't say we're going to play this. Awesome. You can't play the same formation every week if the other team plays a different yeah. way that doesn't suit the formation you want to play. So you've got to trust the judgment of the, of the management team there, haven't you? Surely. Yeah. Do you know what I understand on on Saturday as well? The reason why we played that formation as well because it worked. Yeah. No, not even that, because you look at the way Sheffield Wednesday set up, they play like quite a wide, sort of like five midfield, kind of like pushing on a little um, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they sort of like push on a little bit and um, sometimes drop quite deep. And Barry Bannon, you watch Barry Bannon quite a lot. They, He's the main Sheffield sort of like Wednesday on point. Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday changed their formation to combat what we were doing. In the but second half, yeah, they changed, yeah, they changed the way they played, so the formation we set up worked. So I think it depends who you're playing. So whoever JG is, it depends who you're playing. Mm-hmm. Well, it's exciting to see how we do against when uh, on Wednesday against well, Forest. Can I just say that four three three formation for me doesn't work for us. I don't like it. No, we did that under Graham Jones, didn't we? <laughs> uh, I, felt. I think so. Yeah. Didn't really offer as much going forward. Just don't like it. But it's going to be good. Wednesday, Forest, Saturday, Brentford, and then I have no idea who we got after that. It's exciting, isn't it? I think it's exciting. I think, you know, I think we've got more of a chance to be solid in this division this year. So let's hope. Let's hope we get six points. 
over the next two games. If we're sitting here next Monday with six points, we'll be over the moon. So, yeah. do you know what? Let's hope. I'll probably sat on your table naked, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Every single week comes oh, back to this. Good but God, man. Not, no, no, no. We hope for. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we hope for your sake then. Maybe that Bataro is not sat on our table naked and maybe we can get a draw out of the next two somewhere. Show, show a stone moment there, isn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. On that note, we'll leave you. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching. Get us on YouTube, get us on Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, wherever you want. Oh, and the town. And we shall see you next week. Bye.